Yeah, so Ron Epson, he, yeah, he produced the um, Obsession album. And, um, and this was recorded in LA, what you say? Yeah, in LA at a... Um, at a, a ba- like a, a a vacant postal service building in Beverly Hills. Really? Yeah, it was like big room, very live sounding room, and uh, that's where they did this record. And uh, yeah, it sounds very live sounding. It sounds it very it sounds very raw. But there's some I mean you know there's some very uh, uh you know kind of some mellow stuff on it too. Born to lose. Yeah. And, One uh, of my favorite songs though, man. And Arbery Hill, the instrumental, the um on here, and. You know, Michael, I think Michael approached all this writing kind of from like an instrumental point of view on what sounded good instrumentally to him because he didn't speak English. He didn't really know lyrics or hear this stuff because these guys were writing, you know, lyrics in English. And so I think uh, it was approached like that. And from what I understand, Phil Mogg had talked about that before too, saying like, hey, man, like, this is cool. Let's grab this, but repeat that part. Repeat that part so I can sing Please over sing it. it. Right, right, so right. Can... Second right of it. Yeah, you know. Michael doesn't seem like the type of guy that wants to keep repeating the part, though. You know what I mean? When you oh, listen yeah. to some of, stuff, some of the stuff he does, you know, through the, now knowing his history for where he's at right now. But uh, um, it worked really well. It worked and well. Whoever that arranged that and said, okay, to keep doing this, I'd have to say he probably came up with some of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I think Michael. While he got the. He got the logist of how to write the, uh, you know, to where Phil could work with them because it by again by obsession. There are now five records and it's been five years since he's been in a band. You know, it's just they 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 this one to me is just like wow. Yeah, they're they're firing on all <laughs> they're cylinders. Firing. Yeah, but I think Michael. Yeah, I think he understood kind of you know the, the the songwriting kind of process and all that. But I think Phil was the one that was kind of saying, "Hey, kind of helping to arrange these parts and stuff like that." You know, because Michael's coming at him with all sorts of all sorts of stuff. And there's a lot of instrumentals on UFO albums too. First album, you oh, got yeah, an instrumental. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second album, I don't. I think if, uh, Force It, you might have like Between the Walls or something. And uh, yeah, you got little pieces here and there. Definitely. But yeah, this is, I mean, I don't know, man. I think this is my favorite UFO album. If we're talking studio albums. Yeah. Be, well, for me, it's this one or Force It. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I, like I said, that's when they really started to the plane went like this. But this, the plane's like at 30,000 and just fucking nailing it. So. Oh, I know. Yeah. So I like them both. And Paul Raymond, again, you know, big contribution um, on this album with uh stuff but actually you know i heard now that i say that i heard ron nevison saying that he never really used paul raymond to play guitar on any of the albums he probably didn't probably didn't need to (laughs) why would you (laughs) why would you 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 have the ultimate guy sitting there Keep him to the keyboard check it out when he goes into a lead this is how it goes you know what i mean so You'll, you'll you know how to play it, right? You play the part, right? Okay, well, this is what we need. Other than that, just sit back there and go... Yeah. Dun, dun, it's like... Dun, dun. Like in, in, in Rock Bottom, on the live record, you can just hear him in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on the keyboard, just... Dun, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 you know, just going. I'm, just, I'm holding it. I'm just holding it back here. I got it. Uh, yeah, I'm holding down the fourth. I'm just holding it. Just let but, me yeah. know when we're going... When we're, Bring it when we're bringing it in. Let me know. You know, Paul so. Raymond, though, not, not on the studio stuff, though. You can play guitar live. No, he's p- yeah. probably a little bit, probably a little bit. And then, like I said, for me, this is the one that broke me. That was it right there. Strangers in the Night, double live record. I mean, especially double live. Double you live. Mean I get two. You do for only three dollars more. Fuck thank, yeah, I'm in. Thank God it's a double live album because sometimes th- some of those albums were like singles, like the ACDC one, the Frank Marino one, the Travers one. Yeah. You wanted to be double albums. Oh, th- I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's all about, too, like, you, you know, putting out the, the live album at the right point in your career where you have a back catalog to choose the best songs from. You know what I mean? But I mean, at this point, again, like we talked about, I, I didn't necessarily, I'd heard the name. I didn't necessarily were into him yet, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people weren't. And this record fucking put everybody out i mean i remember the time when because i started driving in 1980 and people were already listening to ufo in their cars at that time you know you made a cassette off the record hell, didn't you hell yeah I, did. <laughs> I had the little turntable that sat on i had a little sound design i had a little cassette thing on the front i'd play the record and push 
play and record yeah on my rock bottom what was it uh uh tdk and intermagnetics yeah tapes. right sure sure damn right i did and i had my little sloppy fuck oh dude i got it right here you'd write on the cassette the ufo logo yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i would of course yeah fuck yeah. or i may even make the cassette cover itself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean in class, because I wasn't paying attention to what was going on in class. Right. I'm going to at least write the little cassette cover with the UFO logo You're on it. You were paying attention to UFO, though. I was paying attention. And see, it comes in handy now. Now, see, see? that's the thing, though. You that's kids get to learn about that, UFO. That's the, that's the thing is I did my homework in school. That's why I'm here today doing this show. Yeah, my mom said, you know what? If you could put as much effort into uh, your homework as you do into, like, this rock and roll stuff, you know, you'd be getting A-pluses. I'm all, yeah, mom, but, you know. And who would have known later on? Now, right. we're at the vault, man, and people need to know. You'd have the history. We wouldn't have this history for you guys if we didn't. If we were doing our homework. Yeah, Stranger Than Night, amazing album. And but then it- I don't know if you went, but when I was at 15, it was The Rockets, Thin Lizzy, Nazareth, UFO, Jay Giles, Day on the Green. Journey, Day on the Green. July 4th, I think it might have been. It might have been. Yeah. It was the, with the clowns. Remember that? 79. 79. No, was it 70? Yeah. <clears throat> it was 79. I can guarantee you it was 79. Yeah, you're right. And then that was um, uh, that was with Paul Chapman. So the, yeah, Paul Chapman so played on usually that. Usually yes, bands because th- that was for yeah, yeah. But usually they were on tour for no, that record. No, '79 they were on tour for this record. But this was out already. This had come out. Oh, no, that didn't come out to Lady. Really? Yeah, yeah. So check this out. No, I'm pretty sure, man. We're gonna check in a minute. So, but UFO, Strangers of the Night. Okay, a lot of band. They toured for this album. A lot of bands <coughs> don't tour for, for a live record. album. But they, but that's what they knew, man. That's what they did best, right? They, 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 they reached the masses by touring. That's how UFO did. Because <coughs> they weren't doing it through radio you, much. No, you know, maybe you are right because I remember them coming to the uh, Henry J. Kaiser for No Place exactly, to Run. You're that's exactly right. right. That's right. So, that's right. So, um, um. So yeah, so Cha- I was there, Chapman kids. comes in, and I saw this tour at Sacramento Memorial um, Coliseum, that Memorial Theater up in Sacramento, really? and it was four one. I think it was four one five with Eric Martin opened up, Judas Priest Hellbent for Leather tour with Les Binks playing drums, and then a UFO headline, and we went to the show thinking that Michael was going to be there because we had saw him in 78 and this was in early 79 that we went to this show because you didn't have internet or nothing like that. We didn't know like he was out of the, the band. newspaper showed up and there's another guitar but we'd heard rumors like all the rumors like when Michael left uh, Lights Out he went to go join the Moonies <laughs> right yeah, yeah remember like, the Moonies yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah Michael went, he sold everything he's a Mooney he's a Mooney now um, when really what he did is take off on his moped to like all over Europe or something like that but um, something else crazy but yeah yeah, yeah still the, didn't join the Moonies yeah Michael is a trip dude no oh, I know I, I've you, heard many Store. We'll we'll do a Michael Shanker episode. We can't get too deep into that. We got to talk about UFO. You got to be that. But we can do a whole episode uh, on on loony, loony, loony. So you got to be kind of uh uh. You got to have a, a loose nut, man, to play guitar that good, man. <laughs> there can't be something all right with you if you're that fucking yeah, talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, strangers, point, and they, but they do thank Chapman on the inside of it. They said uh, uh, on the liner oh, notes, it says right. thanks to our friend and guitarist Paul Chapman, <coughs> Paul Chapman, for filling in because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Michael went, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah, two songs on this album aren't live. Really? Yep. Let it roll and Mother Mary. Really? They didn't have enough. Uh, uh, well, the crowd always sounds fake to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have enough uh, uh, to, to, for the live album, and I think those other songs they wanted to put on there, the the fidelity wasn't there or something, and so they went in there and they uh, recorded those songs in L.A. Really? Yeah. And Michael bitch is bitched and moaned a little bit about the takes that Ron Nevison uh, decided to take off this album. So, oh, there could have been another solo that was better. There's other solos that are better, and he got kind of a little <laughs> bent really? out of shape about that, I heard. But it's like, dude, come on. This album's, I mean, undeniably untouchable. Your solos are fine, Michael. We love you. Le- believe me, I love them. What do you think? Enough strangers? Enough strangers. I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to go. Where do you go from strangers in the night? Well, we have to go to the period when Michael left for the very first time, and they actually had to go with the band. And um, actually, Paul Chapman had to come in and turn into the yeah. Well, Michael left like for the third time at yeah, that well, point, I think, or something. Was it or May the second? Because I know. 
He's got many exits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Second, third. Uh, no place to run. Produced by George Martin. I know. It's what a trip from the Beatles. Can yeah. I knew that? I did know that. <laughs> can you? And and at what point do you look at yourself going? Let's get jo- well. He produced the Beatles. Let's get George Martin. You know what I mean? Not my favorite of the UFOs. Yeah, uh, Trans- probably my least favorite of the UFOs transition in the modern era. Period. Yeah, transition period. I mean, um, let's put out another album fast. Uh, and um, I think George Martin was kind of wanting to get back in the mix a little bit, but he wasn't. I don't think, even though he's one of the a Wrong genius, I, okay. genius. Uh, but I don't think it was right for UFO. Um, but then again, man, there's some good song. There's a few good songs on here for sure. I mean, I love like "Take It or Leave It," which is I am like a mellow Paul Raymond song, and uh, like "Any Day," um, "Gone in the Night." Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad yeah. that Craig can say that. And actually, honestly, sit here and say that there's songs on the likes. I have to be honest with my audience. <laughs> I don't put no place to run. If okay, look at all the great records I got, and even there's a few after that I loved. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But the train stops here for some people. I love UFO. The train does only, stop here for some people. Yeah, I I I love UFO also for Phil Mogg and his melodies and his lyrical approach and um, the songs. The, I mean, there, there's songs too. You know, we lose Michael and we wish we could have him there, but. It's it's not happening, but I think Phil's lyrics are getting better at this point. I mean, I, I, I'll I, tell I you mean, what, as a lyricist, he's, this record, I don't. Oh, let's just we're done with this one. This one <laughs> because, because this one yeah, is sure. gold from top to bottom. It's like you redeemed yourself with me the whole way. The record opens. Ever the sequencing, this has got long gone on it, you know. Uh, 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 train, train, uh, uh, chains, chains, yeah, yeah, chains, pulling us down. Yeah. Great Ch- 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 choruses, man. Ch- Phil Maul can write a fucking killer chorus, but the, but the, but, but the rhythm on that uh, song is so heavy, it's great, <laughs> really g- driving. So, to me, it's you great. Came album. back swinging on this one, it's the best album of the Paul Chapman era. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Come on, bring in it in. In the wild, the willing, and the innocent. Great stuff. And then I know, it's really, It ends really with a, a great ballad, a professional, awesome professional ballad. violence. I love that. With a great I've guitar solo. i to use that as a title for an Exodus song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pro- professional violence. I love that It's shit, got the word man. violence in it. It'd be oh, fun. Yeah. Of course, anything violence <laughs> us, you know. Of course, but I love that. Um, and I thought that... Okay, cool. They've kind of nailed their knack and and um, the songwriters, good songwriters, good songwriters. And Pete Way has said that that's his favorite UFO album. Really? Huh? Yeah. Amazing, because I love every song on the album, and I play it. I think I was in I I was in the gym about two months ago, and I was there was a week where I just played Wild and the Willing and the Innocent every single day and listened to it. I get like that from times, but. Funny that I just went to that record, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I play it's, all these others as well. It's a favorite of a lot. Uh, it's a favorite of a mutual friend of ours, Michael Butler. I think, um, th- yeah, this is his favorite oh, UFO really? album. Is it? Really? Yeah. yeah, we talk about UFO quite a bit, me and Butler. I'm going to have Butler in here, Yeah, too, Butler. Hey, Butler amazing. should be in here on this UFO thing right now. No, I'm going to get him in. We're going to do the, talk about the Exodus Force of Habit record, and he played on that record. So so check this out. Produced by UFO. Yes. Only. First, first uh, uh, um, album that the band produced themselves. They, they were probably taking notes, man, the whole was, time. No, Paul Chapman was already studio fucking. Yeah, was he yeah, savvy? I yeah, think studio savvy. Because yeah. I think he produced, like you said, the band, uh, the bands that he was in um, before Lone Star. He yeah, was, yeah. He was already producing that stuff, so I think he came in. He had a good grip of okay. So, check it out. You're gonna get me in here. This is how we're gonna drive the Cadillac. You right. Know I mean? And it, and I think after this, Phil. You know, completely took plight of, you know, he's the man. Tonka, they call him. Yeah. Paul Chapman. Indestructible. Tonka. Apparently, the yeah, guy could drink brilliant. and, like, you know, you know, like a madman to do drugs and still, still wake up in the morning before everybody else. So, uh, but yeah, this is a great album. Another Hypnosis cover. Another great cover. Yeah, Hypnosis did so many great album covers, man. Yeah. Pink Floyd, yeah. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. <coughs> um, those guys are great. You know why? Because they think all of these these musicians 
kind of like us going, well, if it worked for Metallica, it works for us. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. You have that mentality. Well, it worked for them. It could work for us. You know what I mean? Totally. So, let's get that guy. Let's get George Martin. Yeah. Because look what it did for the Beatles. You know what I mean? So we got to go, you know, it's like when the Ramones <laughs> got Phil Spector. Yeah, right. You know I mean? Let's get Phil Spector because he's written hits forever. We can, let's do that. You There's know? A, that's a whole other story behind that yeah, no, album. Believe man. me. Believe me. But yeah, um, good album. Yes, Debbie's still on the Crystalist label. And then I have a story about this record. They were on tour. They put the Mechanics, this is 82. They put the Mechanics record out. And, uh, and, um, and from 80 to 83, I was a blue coat security. So was Blurry. Yeah. I, for that. Yeah. And it allowed me, what it was, was it was a certain special security kind of that Bill Graham had. There was all event security, but then there was blue coat security. And I was a blue coat. And what it did was it allowed you to be at parts of the arena that nobody got to be at. And this is a time where there was no video cameras backstage. You didn't know what the fuck was going on. All you could hear about was the parties or the stories. But so it gave me a great opportunity. I got to go to many backstage parties after Dan the Greens and, and Van Halen and yeah. stuff. And I was in the Santa Cruz Civic Auditorium working for UFO. I don't know if you went to this. Mechanics tour? Mechanics tour. And um, I'm standing there. And Andy Parker walks up, and he looks at me. And he goes, "Excuse me." He's all, "Are you security for the show?" I'm all, "Yeah." He's all, "Hey, yeah." He goes, "Could you come with me?" And I'm like, "New, I know who he was, right?" So I'm like, "Come with him." He goes, "We was just wondering. I've got to get the band in from the bus into the dressing room." Okay, and there was really nobody fans hanging out there. He's all, "Could you, you know, like help us, you know?" Again, I'm like, "Totally." So I walk over to the bus, and he walks back onto the bus, and I'm standing outside the bus in the bus door. I'm like, all five of them walk out. It was like, but this time it was um, Neil Carter. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it was Andy Parker and Pete Way yeah. and Phil Mogg and Paul Chapman. And there's, and hello, good day, you doing? Nice day, because it was in Santa Cruz. Nice outside. Talk about these limeys. They're coming from fucking, you know, England. They're just yeah. it's, it's dridgy and dreary right. all the time. And here they are in Santa Cruz. And um, so like my job was to watch the hallway that their dressing room was in. So basically, I sat there all day, and they walked in and out of the room. And I, by the end of the day, Andy Parker was calling me Steve because you know I was there. Was buddy at that point. I was buddy at that point. <laughs> I left that gig that night thinking I was the coolest thing ever <laughs> because I hung out with UFO all night. I was watching their dressing room you on know? a professional level. I was, I was, I was their personal security that night. You You're kidding? part of the UFO I, team. I, I, you, you, you don't even know. I had that built up and I'm going on tour with them. You kidding me? They're oh, taking yeah. me out. Oh, you can I wait said, to tell all your oh, friends the next God, day. I, I didn't even <laughs> sleep that night. I go, guess who I hung out with yesterday? Who am I? UFO? No way. I'm all, this is how it went. And they knew that I had done blue coat security for Bill Graham. Yeah. So, it was one of those things where, you know, it was like my, it was one of my first, they gave me, it was one of my first sticker patches they gave me. Oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your backstage pass. My yeah. backstage, Stamped UFO. Dude, no, it was actually oh, their, this album cover. Oh, their, their, their it backstage was their pass. Their backstage yeah. pass. It yeah. said, and it said all access on it. And I had this in my mom's house when I, where I lived, I had this lampshade. And I stuck it on there, so I'd walk in the house every day, turn it on, and the UFO. It was like, like my treasure. Dude, that's and I had it forever. I don't know where it's at now, but I had it for fucking ever. And it was, it was I remember because of this. Again. Okay. Hypnosis um, didn't do this album cover. Okay. Not. <laughs> not. Again, they, I don't know what happened. I was starting to go, is it every other record with these guys now? Because. I saw this. They played this tour um, uh, in San Francisco. They played the S San Francisco Civic. But uh, where you saw it, man, that's a small Santa place. Cruz Civic. Small place. Yes. S yeah, Santa, yeah, Cruz, Santa Civic. Cruz Civic. Santa Cruz Civic Auditorium. Yeah, yeah. So they did. Uh, they 800, did, they did, maybe. They did San Francisco the Civic. Yeah. One night, and they did the uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, either the ne it was the either the night before the next or after. Or the next night. That was like a little side it market. A, yeah, extra no, it was place the next to play. Night because I had did the show as right. well, but I was like on some other part of the venue. And when we went to Santa Cruz, 
the same same blue coat staff wasn't as large because it was a smaller place. Yeah. So when there was thirty of us that night, there was only twelve of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and then the band would play. Then after that, bands would play like Fresno, Bakersfield, Los Angeles, San Diego. I mean, it was a you know the tour- you didn't think so. You just yeah. thought it was like man, everything they must be playing in front of fifteen thousand every night, and it wasn't like that. Yeah, you know? it was a smaller. It just venues. wasn't. But I know that being in the band that I am and being touring now for how many years. They're not all ah, like that, you yeah, know. Yeah. Just the way it is. It's yeah, just man. Part of part of it. So sometimes I, you're in Bulgaria, exactly. <laughs> and that, well, you have the best time you can. But again, Craig, I, I I have to love them, and I love the effort. But there was nothing that stood out to me on this record. I bought the record, went to the tour, because um, you know. But it was like definitely I wasn't cranking it all the time. Um, I became to love the record more later on you know kind of revisiting it um but uh but there are some good songs on here man and um i'll tell you what they are no it's not a, a complete yeah it's not a, a dud, disaster but it was a, but, but but when coming off a of wild and the willing i was like holy shit yeah, every yeah. song's a fucking hit on this album there's some songs that are then, kind of ballady on yeah, here that the, kind too, of that's limp. a big one. Like you went too hard with that, you know. Now, what are you getting away from me? Are we getting older now? We're not going to be as heavy anymore, you know. Come on, guys, you really rocked that. This record, Wild Willie Innocent, really rocked. It's a great one. Hard and, was, and and so that was Pete Way's last uh, last album. No, no, this is Pete Way's last album. Yes, Sorry. yes, yes. So yeah, this was Pete Way's last album. But we belong to the night. It's a good tune, man. It's it's a pretty kicking tune. They still play it to this day once in a while. And uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Pete Way's last album. Then he goes on to start his own band, Wasted, which and, didn't and 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 Fastway, but never really joined Fastway because only, it, they only used his name for about a minute. I mean, he never played a gig with them. Didn't I? Don't think he wrote a song. Played a gig. It was all this uh, contractual lo- um, deal through Chrysalis or whatever. And, but and yeah, and then so Wasted. We done with mechanics. We're done with mechanics. All right. Okay, kind of moving on. What do we got next? Uh, making contact. Should we even talk about it? I think this is like this is kind of you're, like you're, you're off the train. Yeah, well, I mean now you're now I'm going back into the catalog. You know <laughs> what I mean? I, I, honestly, I, I, I although the record that they came back and did with Michael in in ninety uh, five was it ninety five? Walk on water. Walk on water. I love that with record. Warren Evison. I the, I love that record. But anything else? Even this one was. Eh, I, I hated the record cover and everything. It's I like hear you. come on, you guys are. Now you're getting cheesy, and when you, it's time to when you get when you're running out of gas, get out, get out, just get well, out. Well, that uh, okay. So we got this making contact. Then we go to to uh, misdemeanor, which was the band, which uh, they broke af- up after this album, I yeah. think. And for uh, like two years, yeah. And then he comes back. He, they he's break done that up a few times. Yeah, let's see. No, they broke up after this album. Then they came back and did this, and then I think through Shrapnel and Mike Varney, they got Atomic Tommy to play uh, guitar. Right, right, that's right, and. Um, the album cover's kind of cool, man. It's not <laughs> hypnosis. It's not <laughs> hypnosis. All right. Um, so, yeah, man, that's kind of uh, the heyday of UFO, uh, uh, more or less. I think, I think to me, again, you know, from 73 to 79 is that incubation period where you found what sound that you had and what you wanted to be even though there were some gems along the road you know like as we agreed that wild willing was but there were songs on other things that were good maybe a little too soft on some stuff maybe you know, he changed the lineup a little bit too hard. I mean, look at them. They're like a glam band. No, I know, and no I know. misdemeanor. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. It's, it's 85. You know what I mean? So it's just like not really, um, uh, uh, you know, what what we knew as UFO. Oh, yeah, so yeah. so for me and you, it's like, you know, when you're putting something in, go put in some UFO. What album you put in? Obsession. Yeah. Force It. Of course. Lights Out. Phenomenon. You know what I mean? Probably not even Phenomenon. Probably more like. Everything from Force It, you know, up, you know, yeah, and, uh, and definitely Obsession, because yeah, that sure. was that was the one that just capped it for all of us. So. Well, you know, I mean, you can only sustain that sort of a personnel for that long, a, a, a great personnel, you know, and, and that many guys for that long, and that energy that you create for that long. Sometimes it only has a, a shelf life, man, and and that shelf life though is the time that you're talking about. Yeah, well, and, I mean, just the leg again. That was the time where you'd 
it was raw when these guys were young and they're drunk on the road and partying and they played you know, drunk. I mean, oh, they played. They did. They did other. They loved other things as well. See you know what I mean? And you could tell they were all girl guys because by the end of the last song, none of them had a shirt no, on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all had their shirts off. So they were, you know, they were probably the ultimate sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know what I mean? And so, Pete Way was getting more fucked up than you know any I mean? of them. I, mean, I think, so, he, yeah, he can, that guy can play bass pretty drunk. There's the Exodus story, supposedly when he, I wasn't in the band at that time, but there's a story about when they ruined Pete Way for the show and Phil Ma got mad at Exodus and I was in this was when Rob was in the band I guess they tell it on some uh, album before the album or some if you buy some Digipack there's a story yeah, yeah. where they talk about <laughs> it and I guess he's never returned to UFO Zins. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, you, I think you guys got Exodus got him fired from I UFO. I, I have to take that I'm in Exodus, but I wasn't in the band at that time. I was doing one of my Michael Shanker stints. Okay. Know? And um, and but I mean, at being a representative, being in the band, I will take my responsibility. Yes. We as that type of band yeah, yeah. ruined him. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, that I was... know what my guys can do. You know what I mean? So yeah, I Pete, heard about it. It was very funny. He was a charming mess, man. Yeah. God bless him. But God influenced, I mean, Steve Harris, uh, a big influence on like... Uh, Look at the bass like that he St plays. You know St what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Look at Leonard like, Butler. You yeah, know Butler. what I mean? Come on, that's what it, that's what it yeah. is. You know what anyway, I mean? Anyway, man. I mean, that guy... And he's a great... Everybody wanted to do... When you play bass, if you didn't go do, 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 like that, then you... <laughs> Yeah. You never saw Pete Way, or you then exactly Steve Harris. Yeah, Nikki Six tried to dress like Pete Way and kind of pull that Pete Way off thing, but I don't well, know with the white stripe thing. Didn't it work, man? Did not good. Well, I think the stripes went the other way. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, one of the best, one of the best rock bands of that era of the '70s era. Definitely UFO, huge influence Definitely. on me. Brought me great joy all over the years. Yeah, made your music to what it was. So you actually have a. A Pete Way story like Exodus has. So, and you knew, you knew somebody who was in the band for a minute. Tell tell that story, Craig. Oh, um, yeah, this friend of mine, James, he was playing with UFO like later on in the uh, late eighties. What or year was the late eighties? Yeah, something like that. And um, he was he was uh, the hair metal UFO. Yeah, I don't think he did a record or anything like that. But um, it was uh, him and Lawrence Archer was playing guitar with UFO at the time, who played in Phil Lynott's Grand Slam, and then. Um, I forget who was playing bass. But he told the story. He goes, yeah. So we get to rehearsal and like, you know, drums are set up. Me and Lawrence were all ready to play, you know. And then, you know, they'd be waiting for Phil for half an hour. And then he'd show up in there with like a four pack of tenants, uh, you know, with beers and put it behind the P, uh, PA. And he'd look at the rest of the guys and go, don't tell Pete that's there. And then he would leave. And then, you know. 20 minutes would go by and Pete would show up to rehearsal, you know, and he'd have his four pack of beer and put it behind the bass amp and go, don't tell Phil that's there. And then he would leave. And then finally all the guys would show up and they'd start rehearsing. And then, uh, you know, somehow Pete Way and Phil Mogg would get in a fight and rehearsal's over, you know, and these guys are like looking around. Well, we've been waiting like for two hours for these guys to get here. And then we play three songs and they're gone. And so those guys would end up, you know, they'd stay in jam and they go, ah, fuck it. Okay, we're done. And they'd walk out of the rehearsal. They'd walk down, they'd look inside the pub and there'd be Phil and Pete drinking, and they, you know, having a row with each other. <laughs> it's like, I guess they knew the songs well enough. That's you know, wild. It was like, Something's never changed. That's what man. makes rock and roll. It is rock and roll. So. <laughs> well, right on, man. I yeah. think we, I think we nailed UFO pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think so. We covered some ground. Covered some ground. You guys leave us comments and tell us, you know, your experiences of how big of an in, especially you older metalheads like uh, Craig and I, <laughs> that we have to use glasses. You notice I don't put the glasses on because I don't. Everything I write is in big bold letters so I can fucking <laughs> read it. But uh, older metalheads, I'm sure you guys, you know, just like us, were very much influenced by that sound. And uh, leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. I can have you back in to talk some other shit. Yeah, this let's is do really it. Cool. Let's do it, man. And then uh, those of you who aren't really into UFO, do yourself a favor yes. and listen to UFO. Yeah, especially the Michael Schenker years, which is uh, 73 to 78, 70, the initial years and stuff first and, first five six albums yeah. you know and 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 uh like i said like i said he did come back the original lineup did come back for walk on water yeah and i thought that that was a great record too which is so it it really shows the chemistry that they had 
and could recreate because the five people worked so well together. I was know? at all those shows. Yeah. I was amazed they got back together. Yeah, that was yeah, very surprising. Yeah, yeah. And then then it, it, it blew up it just as, right there. It blew up just, just as soon as, as they as got as, yeah, <laughs> as quick as they got together. It blew These up. Things. Yeah. Anyway, you guys leave me leave me some comments. Share this channel. Um, subscribe to my channel, and I uh, will be giving you more and more stuff like this for myself and uh, Mr. Craig Beerhorst. Um, we'll see you in the vault talking some other artist spotlight. There's so many, and so many you know as well. That's why I kind of like having you here doing this. It's kind of fun. Well, cool, man. Well, thanks for having me, and I'll be back. All right. We'll see you guys real soon. Lay up.